Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my new video where today I'm gonna be showing you how to make a parallax scrolling website using a free theme from WordPress. So even if you guys have never made a website before, have no idea what you're doing, that's totally okay because I'm gonna be walking you through from start to finish. I'm gonna show you how you can set up everything here that you see, but just in a different way so you guys can make it specific for your own website. So before we get started, I'm just going to go over a couple things and then we'll get straight into building our website. Website hosting is basically where your website is going to live online. It's where all your content is stored from your videos to your pictures and everything else that's on your website is stored there. And another way I like to explain this to people is like this. Think if you were going to build a house, before you can actually start building, you would need the land to put the house on. So just try to think of the domain name or the website as the house and then the hosting as the land. Website hosting normally costs anywhere from $60 to $100 a year, sometimes more. But today I'm going to show you how we're going to get website hosting for just a dollar a month that also includes a free domain name and an automatic WordPress installation. Your website domain is the address of your website. So for example, a couple of domain names are ebay.com, google.com, youtube.com. You get the idea. Okay guys, so that should pretty much cover everything. Now we can get started building the actual website. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to my website and we're going to get our hosting discount. And the link we want to go to is createwpsite.com slash host dash deal. And then once we get to the hosting deal page, we're just going to click on this GoDaddy coupon. Okay, so now this video is going to cut to another video that I made previously where I'm going to show you how to get your free domain name and set up hosting and install WordPress. The only difference is you're going to see now that the price is only $1. It's on sale for $1 a month versus what you'll see in the next video is $2.49 a month. So I'm not sure how long this is going to last at the dollar a month, but um, you might want to take advantage of it because I'm not sure, like I said, when it's going to go back to 250 or if it will. So I'm going to cut over to that video and that's going to explain everything we need. And then after that, I'll be back and we can start building our website and WordPress. OK, guys, so the first thing we're going to do is click on this green get started button. And this is where we're going to choose our free domain name. So whatever you want your website to be called, you can check here to see if it's available. And once you decide on a name, you can just enter it here. I'm going to enter mine. And now I'm going to click on search to see if it's available. OK, it is. So I'm going to click on select and continue. And as you can see, our promo code has been applied to our entire year of hosting. So we got the discount, which is cool. And now we're just going to click on create account. All right, and now we're going to fill out this form for our GoDaddy account. And some of this information is going to be blurred out just for privacy reasons, obviously. But all we're going to do is enter our email address. If you don't have one, I just recommend maybe going to Google and signing up for a free Gmail account. And then you're going to come up with a username and a password and then also a PIN number. And these can be anything you want. Just make sure you guys save all this info somewhere. So when you need to log into GoDaddy, you can. So now I'm just going to enter in my information. OK, and then after we have all that filled out, we're just going to click this green create account button. Okay, now I'm just going to put my billing info in. All right, and once that's all done, we can go ahead and click on save. Okay, now I'm going to be using a card to pay. They also have PayPal too. You guys can choose any method you like though. They'll all take us to the same place in the end, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. All right, now my payment info is in, so I'm just going to click on this blue save button. And then we're ready to complete the purchase, so we're just going to click on this green button here. All right, guys, and that's it. We got our hosting now, and we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so what we're going to do now is click on this blue add site button. 
And then we're just going to leave everything like it is, build a brand new site, and then wherever it's recommended, you can just uh, put it there. And now we're going to uh, come up with a WordPress username and password. So just like for the other stuff, just come up with a username and a password, and then uh, make sure you save that information somewhere. Okay, and then after you do that, you can just click on Add. And this is just currently installing WordPress for us. Alright, and that's it. WordPress is installed. That's the uh, simple one-click WordPress install right there for you. And uh, now we're just going to click on this blue WP Admin button. And then once we get to this page, just go ahead and click on No Thanks. And that will just automatically take you to your WordPress dashboard. And this is the place where you go whenever you want to edit your site. Okay guys, so before we do anything, we're going to go verify our email from GoDaddy. And so we're just going to go to our email accounts. And there should be a uh, email from GoDaddy that says, uh, please verify your email address. And here's mine. And just click on verify email now. Okay, and that's it. It's been um, verified. Okay, now I'm back over on my WordPress dashboard, and I'm just going to refresh this page right here. And then after you do that, where it says no, just click on change domain. And now click on add domain. And find your uh, domain right here. Mine's already selected. And uh, make sure this is selected. Uh, it says make this primary domain for the account. And then after you have everything selected, hit uh, add. Okay, and we're just going to wait on this to update. Just take a couple minutes. All right, now that's been updated. And what that just did is change the uh, location of everything that we're going to be making on our WordPress website. So it's no longer to uh, this FTP upload site. It's now going to all be on our main domain. Okay, guys, and now I'm going to show you how you log into your WordPress account anytime you need to edit something on your site. So what we're going to do is uh, open up a new tab. And then you're going to take your website and you're going to put it in and then you're going to put slash WP dash admin after the dot com or dot net, whatever your uh, domain is. And then after that, click enter. And then when it comes up here, all you do is uh, put in your account information that you created earlier. So again, it's just your domain name slash WP dash admin anytime you want to log into your WordPress account. Alright, so I just put my information in. Now I'm just going to click log in. And now this will take us right back to the WordPress dashboard. And now we can start finally building the actual site. Okay, so the first step is installing our WordPress theme. This is going to give our website the look we want. And to do that, we're just going to go over to Appearance, and then we're going to click on Themes. And then after that, we're going to come over here and we're going to click on Add New Theme. And this is where all the themes are to choose from. You guys can check them out. They're all free to use and they have tons to choose from. So if you ever want to change the look of your website, you can, no problem. But the theme we're going to be using is called Sydney. So I'm just going to go over here to the search box and type in Sydney. And there it is right here. And now I'm going to click install. Okay, and now the Sydney theme has been installed and activated. So now we're going to go up here and we're going to install these two recommended plugins for the Sydney theme. And we're just going to click on begin installing plugins. We're going to select both of these plugins. Then we're going to go up here and we're going to click on install. And then we're going to click apply. Okay, now those are activated and we're going to go install one more plugin. So let's head over to the plugins and then click on add new. Then in the search box over here, we're going to type in one click demo import. Then we're going to search for that. And this is the plugin right here. And we're just going to click on install now. And this is just the plugin that's going to really help us bring our website to life. Then after that, click on activate. And when you guys are here at your plugins, just make sure you double check the Elementor and the Sydney toolbox are activated. 
You can just click on this and then click apply. Now everything we need is activated. Okay, now we're going to go over here to appearance and then we're going to click on import demo data. And then just click on this blue import demo data button. Okay, so now the demo data has been imported. So now if we go over here to our website, you'll see that everything has already been added for us. So now when we use uh, Elementor to edit the website, we can just simply uh, edit each piece to make it our own, which is going to make things a lot easier. And this is the Elementor right here. This is the uh, drag and drop website builder. But before we start doing anything with Elementor, I'm going to go back over here and exit to the dashboard. And so the next thing we're going to do is edit some of our site info. So to do that, we're going to go over here to settings, and then we're going to click on general. And the first thing we're going to do is edit the site title. And this is usually the name of your website or your business's name. And then I'm also going to add a tagline for the website too. And what this does is just help explain more to a new visitor what your site is all about. All right, now we've added our title and tagline. Now we can just scroll down here to save changes. And now what we're going to do is go and add some pages to our website that we'll be using later. Now, before I continue, I just want to say these pages that I'm going to be putting up are not the same ones that you have to put up. You can have any page that you feel fits your website, whether it be a videos page, a blog page, photos, articles, whatever you want. But the pages that I'm going to be putting up are the ones that I feel every business should have right at the top of their website. And that is a menu page or a products page, a services page, a contact us page, and then an about us page. So what we're going to do first is head over to pages and then click on add new. And this first page is going to be a services page. This would be for a business and obviously what services it offers. So right here at the top is where you're going to put your page title anytime you want to create a new page. And then below here is where you're going to put whatever content that you want to appear on that page. And I'll make sure I include a link for every page that we're building. So if you want additional tips on how to build a specific page, you'll have that available. But right now we're just going to focus on getting everything set up, then content can be added later. So now I'm going to click on this publish button over here because we're ready to go on to the next page. And every time you guys are done updating a page that you're working on, make sure you go over here and you click this publish button. So now the next page I'm going to be putting up is the menu page or the products page, whichever you prefer. I'm going to do menu because this is for a bakery. So just like last time, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on add new. And then like I said too before, I'll put some links here on this actual page to show you guys how to create a menu or a products page and also a really cool free WordPress restaurant plugin that you guys can check out. All right, and now that's finished. I just added the links to that page too. And now I'm going to go over here like we did last time and just click on publish and then publish again. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the last two pages, which are the contact us page and then the about us page. All right, so I got these last pages set up and I added custom links in for each individual page, just like I did for the others. And now I'm just going to go and publish both of these. What we're going to do now is add those pages that we just made to our menu so they appear at the top of our website. And to do that, we're going to go over to appearance and then we're going to click on menus. And then once we get here, I'm actually going to get rid of all these pages here except for the home page. You want to keep that one so people can always get back to your home page wherever they are on your site. So I'm just going to go through and delete these three old pages so we can replace them with the four new pages that we just made. Then we're going to go over here and we're going to select the four pages that we just made. And then we're going to click on add to menu. Then I'm just going to go and rearrange the order of this a little bit with the home button first. Then I'm going to put the menu page next. And then after that, the services. Then I'm going to keep the about us and contact us page just like that. Then we're going to click on save menu. 
So now if we go over here to our home page, you'll see that all those pages that we created are now located on our menu at the top right of our website. So what we're going to do now is start getting into some of the design stuff since we have our pages and menu set up. So what we're going to do first is edit these main scrolling header images here. And to do this, we're going to click on Customize. Then we're going to click on Header Area. And then Header Slider. Now we can change these images to whatever we want. And most of the images you'll see me using in this video are free stock photos from this website called Pexels.com. And you guys can check them out if you need free photos to use for your site. I also put a link to their site in this video resource page too if you guys need it. It's down here you can just click on it right here. And there it is. So now I'm back over here and what I'm going to do is just change the image for this first slide. And this is going to be the first image that people see when they land on your website. So choose something that would make sense for your site. And to do this, we're going to click on Remove. Then you're just going to go and then click Select Image. You can drop your files here just like this. Then you can go over here, click on Choose Image. Okay, now that first slide's been updated, and I'm just going to go down here, and I'm going to do the same thing for the second one. Okay, and now the second slide has been updated. And then what I'm going to do is edit the slide title and subtitle for this first slide. This is the text that's going to be on the slider image. And then I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to do the same thing for the second slide. And now that's going to do it for our two slides. If you guys want to do more than two scrolling images, you can. Just scroll down here and you'll see all these extra slides are open. But I'm just going to leave it at two. And before we save, we're going to edit this call to action button right here. So we're going to scroll down here. And this is where you edit the call to action button. And where it says primary, if you get rid of that and add a link here to a page or a website, that's where it will take the person when they click on it. But I'm just going to leave it how it is so it scrolls down the page once we click on it. I'm just going to change this text though for the button to view menu. Okay and then after you're done editing the call to action button we're going to go up here and we're going to click on publish. Okay so now we got our new backgrounds we've edited our title slides and we're ready to move on to the next step. So what we're going to do now is change some of the site colors starting with this call to action button. So for this we're going to go back over here to customize then we're going to go down here and click on colors and then general and then where it says primary color we're going to click there you guys can make this any color you want just by switching this like that but if you guys don't want to change it you don't have to you can just leave it how it is but I'm going to change it so it's from red to blue and then after that just go up here and click on publish and that's how you change the color for the call to action button Okay, now I'm going to show you how to change some of the site colors. And basically, I'm going to switch everything over from red to blue, and a couple of the buttons I'm going to make orange. So I'm going to first close this page right here. Then I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to click on Edit with Elementor. And this is going to make everything super easy to edit. You literally just point and click on the stuff you want to change. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to scroll down the page. Now if you click on one of the red buttons, the edit box pops up over here. And if we go up here and we click on style, you'll see where it says primary color. If we click it, this is how you change the color for that icon, just like the call to action button that we just edited. So I'm just going to update this to the orange color that I want. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on update. And now I'm going to do that same exact thing for these two buttons right here. Okay, so I just finished changing the colors for those last two buttons, and now I'm going to change the icons for these buttons. And we're just going to kind of work through each of these sections one at a time versus editing all over the site. So if we go over here to content, and then scroll through this list right here under icons, you'll see that there's tons to choose from. I'm actually looking for a phone icon, so I'm going to type in phone up here. This is the one I want. And then I'm also going to change the button view from framed to stacked. And now I'm going to edit this title and description here under this button. And you guys can change these to anything you want. I'm just going to give you an idea of what a business may put here. 
Okay, now that's done, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so when someone clicks this button right here, it takes them to our contact page. So to do that, I'm going to go over here to contact us. I'm going to open that in a new tab, and I'm just going to copy this link. I'm going to come back over here, click back on that button, and then right here, I'm going to paste the link. And now anytime that somebody goes and clicks on this button, it'll take them to our contact page. So if they need some additional info, they can get it. Now I'm just going to click on update since that button's complete. Okay, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did for this button here to these two buttons right here. And then I'll be back. Alright, so I just updated those last two buttons, and for the menu button, I just connected my menu pages to it. And for the catering button, I just connected my services page to it. Now I'm just going to update the colors on two more things in this section. This little red bar here, I'm going to switch that to blue. Then I'm going to change the color of this red button to blue, and also change the text and where it links to. Okay, so that's it for the last two things, and if someone now comes to our site, and they click on this orange button here, or they click on this blue button here, they'll both take them to the menu page. And also while I'm here, I want to show you guys real quick how to change this header that appears above each post and page. So to change it, we're going to click on Customize. Then we're going to go to Header Area. Then Header Media. Then this is where it is right here. We're going to click on add new image. I'm just going to drop this in. Click on select and crop. Then I'm just going to crop it to where I think it looks good. And basically everything that's highlighted is what will show up. Okay, now I'm going to click on crop image. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to click on publish. Then I'm going to close this. And now you'll see that the header in our pages and posts has now been updated. And that's how you do it if you ever want to change it. All right, so now I'm going to go back to the home page so we can continue editing the next section. So I'm just going to go back up here and click on Edit with the Elementor. All right, now we're going to scroll down a little bit and edit this second section here. And for this next section, I'm going to change this image here. And then I'm going to change these buttons, the colors and the styles of them. And then I'm going to add in my own custom text. So we'll start with the buttons. I'm going to go and I'm going to change the color of these. So just like for the other ones, we're going to click on this first button here. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to change this icon to check circle. Okay, here it is. I'm going to select that. Okay, and then I'm going to change the view from frame to stacked. And then I'm going to go up here to style. And then I'm going to change the color. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to do the same thing for these other two buttons. Okay, so I just finished these last two buttons, so now I'm going to go back up to this first one, and I'm going to put in a title and a description for it. Okay, now I'm going to go and do the same thing for these next two. Okay, so I just finished those, and if you guys want to go and add links to these buttons, you can, but I'm just going to leave them blank. Okay, now what I'm going to do is get rid of this phone and replace it with a different image. So we're just going to click on it. Then we're going to click on delete. Then just like every other time, we're just going to drop the files in. Now this is just a logo that I had created for five bucks from a website called Fiverr.com. You guys can put any image you want here though. You can even just use another free stock image from Pexels.com. I just like the look of a custom logo right here. I feel like it makes it look a little more professional. And I also put a link in the resources page too if you guys are interested in getting a custom image made for cheap. It's right here under the Fiverr section. And this is the best gig I could find on here for logo creation as far as time, price, and reviews go. I'm only recommending this specific gig because I bought from it so many times. Otherwise, I just say use an image you already have or one of the free stock photos if you don't want to spend anything extra on the site. Okay, so now that's going to be everything for this section here. And I'm just going to click on update now and save everything. Okay, and if you guys decide to at any point you feel like there's too many sections and you don't have enough content to fill everything out, you can always get rid of any of the sections just by clicking this X up here. And I'm actually going to get rid of some of them here just because I don't think they're all necessary and I feel like after a while they start to get a little redundant. But like I said, all you have to do to get rid of each section is just to click this X right here. So the ones I'm going to be getting rid of are this one. 
I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to get rid of this one. We're going to keep this one. And I'm just going through and keeping the ones that I feel like are most useful to the site versus the ones that you don't really need that are just there to be there. So I'm going to keep scrolling down and I'm also going to keep this here. And I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm also going to get rid of this one. And this one. And this one. And this one. And the rest of this will stay the same. And that'll just help clean it up a little bit without sacrificing any content. But like I keep saying throughout this whole video, whatever you think is right for your website, I just think it helps clean it up a little bit and maybe avoid some content overload. But if you have the content, you can use everything and you can even add sections too. Alright, now we can move on to this third section. This is where you can introduce your staff if you'd like. Or maybe if you're selling products, you could put your most recommended products here and just switch the headline to something like most recommended products. Just try to be creative with it if you don't have a staff to introduce. And don't forget, you also have the choice to add or remove any of these sections that we work on. But now I'm just going to edit this first image here. And I'm actually going to get rid of this fourth item here. So it's just the three pictures. And for some reason this disappears over here when you edit it, but when you update it and refresh the page, it shows up again. But I'm just going to click on this first item here, and I'm going to delete this picture. Then I'm going to click it again to add a picture. And then after that, I'm going to change the employee name and then the position too. And you guys can add any social accounts too just by plugging in your social media links here. Okay, so now I'm just going to update this again so we can see this pop back up. Then I'm going to refresh the page. Okay, and there's our first image right here. So I'm just going to do that same thing now for these last two images. All right, so I just put up my last two images here, and then I updated and refreshed the page, and this is what it looks like after it's done. So now we're going to move on to this next section here. And this is going to be the review section. This is where you can post reviews that people have left for you or for your business. So for this, I'm going to be changing these images here. Then I'm also going to be changing the client name and then the client position and then also adding the testimonial down here. Okay, now I'm just going to do the same thing for the second image here. Alright, so I just refreshed the page and this is how it's going to look after it's done. And one thing that I wanted to mention too to you guys is that when you're uploading these photos for this client section, make sure the images that you use are square. Because otherwise the shapes around the pictures can start to vary and they won't look the same. So if you use a square, they'll both look the same. Okay, now we can just scroll on down here to the next section, which is the Our Work section. And this section is basically where you're going to show examples of the work that your business does. And you can separate these images by using filter terms like they did here. But just to keep everything simple, I'm going to keep everything under one label and it's going to be called Bakery. But first what I'm going to do is get rid of this image right here. And then upload my first image. Okay, now after I got that first project up, I'm just going to edit the title. And as you can see, it shows all these show up as project title. But if you just erase them, which I'm going to do, they just show up without anything. You guys can put whatever you want on there, but I'm just going to keep them blank. And then I'm going to change this to bakery. Okay, and just like the other sections, I'm going to go and do the same for the rest of these images here. And you guys don't have to use as many images as I'm using either. You can probably be okay with using about six to eight images and it'll still fill out. 
And same thing too goes for these images. If you guys want to add a link to any of these pictures right here, just put it right there and anytime somebody clicks on that picture, it'll send them to wherever the link is. Alright guys, so I just uploaded all my images. I actually added 5 more images for a total of 15 and this is how it looks after that. So now what I'm going to do is click on update here just to save everything. Alright, now this next section is going to be the social media section and this is where you're going to put all your social info. And it's pretty much like everything else, you just point and click and then you add each social media link in. I'm actually going to edit these so I end up with the following social accounts. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and then LinkedIn. Alright, so I just added those in, and again, right there is where you're going to put your link for each social media account. So now I'm just going to click on Update. And if you guys need help finding your social media links, I put a link in the video resource page down here where it says find your social media links and click here and this page will show you exactly how to do that. Alright so now we're going to edit this last section of our website which is the footer section. So after your page is saved just go up here and click on exit to dashboard. Then we're going to go up here to appearances and then click on widgets. Then we're going to click on footer one. Then we're going to click on video. And you guys can replace this video with your own video if you want, but I'm actually going to switch it up and I'm going to put an image here instead because I feel like it gives the website a better look with the logo down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is go over here to where it says image, then I'm just going to put that here, and then for this video I'm just going to click on delete. Now I'm going to select my image. Then click on add to widget. Then I'm just going to click on save and you guys can put a link here if you want. I'm just going to leave it blank though. And so if we go up here to our website to the home page and then scroll down to the bottom you'll see that the video has been replaced by the new image. And I just feel like that gives it a way more professional look. Alright, and then I'm just going to close this footer one up and then we're going to go over here to footer two. And then this is where the text is. And this is just something where you can write something brief about your website. So I'm going to replace it with my own text. Then I'm going to click on save. Then I'm going to close this up and then we're going to go to footer three. And then this is the contact info. This is where you're going to want to put all your business's contact information. Okay, so I just finished putting all the contact info in. Now I'm going to click on save. Then if we go up here to our website and then scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that our footer has been completely updated and now looks clean and professional. Alright, so now I'm just going to change one last thing to put the finishing touches on our website. And I'm going to scroll up here. Then I'm going to click on Customize. Then I'm going to go to Site Title Tagline Logo. And then I'm going to upload my own logo. So it replaces this text here. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to click on Publish. Alright guys, so that's going to bring us to the end here, and this is what the finished product looks like. Very clean, very simple, very professional looking. So I hope you guys enjoyed following along in this video. I tried to make everything as simple as I could. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend if you'd like. If you have a question or a comment, you can leave it below the YouTube video in the comments section, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And now I'm just going to go over a couple of small tips for some of the inner pages to the website. But other than that, that's going to be it for this video today. So I really hope you enjoy your new website, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. If you guys ever decide that you want to change the structure of your URLs on your website, just go over to Settings, and then go to Permalinks. 
and once you get here you're going to notice a bunch of different settings here and the month and name is the default setting and basically what that means is it's just your website anytime you have a post it's going to be your website slash the month and the name of the post but you can also change it so it's just your website slash whatever the name is of your post there's a lot of different ones to choose from I think a lot of people like to go with the post name just because it helps clean up the URL a little bit but you guys can do whatever you like and uh, that's how you change your permalink settings so if you guys need to add a photo or any type of media to one of your actual posts all you have to do is basically do the same thing we've been doing the whole video which is just go up here to add media then you select the file you want and then you click insert into post if you guys ever want to set a featured image it's really simple all you have to do is go over here to featured image make sure you're on the document section not the block section just come down here and click on featured image and then click set featured image and it's the same thing you just select it and then insert it in to get rid of it all you have to do is go over to appearance and then you click on widgets and then right here you'll notice your sidebar is and all you have to do is click on each one and if you want to delete it you just click the delete button I just want to show you guys how I set up this uh, menu page right here real quick and uh, also this breakfast page and now all I did was I came here to my menu pages and if you just go and you click right here on add block you'll see a bunch of different stuff pop up and um, for each one of these all I did was I clicked the image and then inserted the image and then put each caption underneath it and then also if you click on the image right here if you set it to custom URL you can put any link you want in here so anytime somebody goes and clicks on the, your picture it'll send them to wherever the link is that you put up and also too I mentioned this in the video earlier but if you want to have your menu pages have extra subcategory pages like this all you have to do is go over to appearance and then go to menus and then you just select what pages you want here and then you click on add to menu and then you just take the page you want and you put it under the menu not directly under here but a little over to the side this would this would make this page pop up at the top of the menu but if you put it down here this would put it into a subcategory and then of course after you arrange them where you want you just click save menu and if you guys have any other questions on this video just leave it in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can